Welcome to your magic moon message. This is the Peace Dila. The moon is in Sagittarius. Um, getting pretty depressing out. Sun is in Aries. Okay. Um, daily reminder that sex magic can and will change your life. And uh, if you ever have sex, um, just be very intentful before and during. That's it. You can light candles, but it just just be very present. In intention. Intention. All right, I just want to say that. Anyway, moon is in Sag, and we are in the Sagittarius angle and signature. Something about Aries that just resets the board, and we get original placements. Can you imagine that? A moon in Sag, ninth house of Sag to the Aries sun. Beautiful. Beautiful. And that means it's happening, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> I'm going to break down a bit of some zodiac science here just to let you know how monumental this is, okay? From now until a week, from moon in Sag until moon in Pisces, you are quite literally completing a very complete... To well, you're completing a complete... Yeah, you're completing a total game changer as it regards your identity. You are resituating, reconfiguring, quite literally flipping on its head the way you perceive and understand yourself, the way you interpret the meaning of who you are and the reasoning of why you even believe in yourself and what beliefs you move forward with, okay? Um, so just open your mind to that. It's happening right now. And if you think that... Um, you are an expression, you are a soul, I am, right? Um, that opens up a path for you to walk through. And then when the moon goes into Capricorn, we're gonna apply this higher perspective of Sagittarius and now walk on that grounded path. This is the completion of this cycle that's going to complete uh, mainly the direction you fulfill your legacy in. And it, it's important because when you stand in who you are, you don't waste time responding to what you're not. Um, nobody can take your power away from you. So the best that other people can do, insecure, uh, and well, it's a, it's a mechanic of the weak. The strong don't do this. The powerful don't do this. So the weak will place a label of you that you're not, that fits within their limited understanding. Mind you, these are pretty um, mentally challenged people. So like, this is really the extent of what they can do because you exist as a threat. You're never really a victim given that you threaten their existence because what's real can't be threatened and when you're fake and you live a lie everything threatens you so you know when you know who you are this insecure projection of labeling you who you're not it doesn't really affect you because you know you're not that you know that that's only being projected at you because that's weakness that is coming from being threatened by who you are you know because it's unsolicited it's not necessarily even triggered. Um, it's being said just because of how authentic you are. And that honestly is like points in a video game. Like you're gaining experience points. Um, having to deal with, and the reason why I'm mentioning these dynamics is when we deal with oppositions and light squares, you're dealing with outside influences. What are gonna be outside influences relative to you as an individual? Other people. Um, social expectations, groupthink, all right? And this is enabling you to see who you are beyond that. The psychological manipulative ways with which one can preach to a choir and give the impression that, oh, all these people, this is a popular opinion, but like a 100,000 idiots are still stupid. And it doesn't change the fact that that one person that said the truth said the truth. Let me give you an example. A hundred million people can believe that one plus one is three, but you is single person saying that one is one is two was right while, while all those hundred thousand idiots were being idiots, okay? And so 
this is kind of literally what many of you may be going through where you're being challenged to maintain that authenticity in the face of people putting conviction and putting bass in their voice behind well we believe one plus one is three and that's just how we feel and you can't tell us how we feel and now they're turning to their crowd and saying yeah one plus one is three that person thinks one plus one is two so like i'm personally not offended if I'm getting made fun of for speaking and knowing the truth, it's just levels of irony delectably put together I can't even complain about at this point. But if you're caught up in your ego, some people can get so caught up in their ego, oh man, they're making fun of me. And now you're lowering yourself to a conflict that you exist beyond, even if off just the strength that by these opposing influences lowering themselves, they elevated you and you all you had to do was be yourself so just be very mindful it's very easy for insecure people to project labels on you it's not necessarily that easy to hold one accountable and to stand into who you are um weak people need to hide behind a crowd so that they can oh yeah that's what, the whole time you argue one plus one is three so you know you don't want to be a fool and argue with a fool um don't trick yourself into believing, oh, you're coming into greater strength by going through this. You're the threat. You're not the victim. So this is letting you know you're going to see this more than ever. All right. Count it all joy when you go through trials and tribulations. Many of you are demon slayers and you are quite literally triggering the demons within other people. You're getting ready to see who people are, who doesn't clap when you succeed who, you know, is linking up with people who want to see you fail, all sorts of stuff. And please understand, despite the fakeness and the bravado people put, for them to come from such an insecure place means that they are punching their fists in the air. They're raging inside. No one secure will do these tactics. This is where the moon and Sag square Pisces will disillusion you from how people act versus what they really believe inside because you see it through their actions. And, you know, you'll realize that most conflicts are not even worth your time. Trust me on this. So, yeah, the uh, application of this perspective, mm, feel it. Feel, claim who you are. It's good to feel. People who do not have that claiming of who they are are the people who hurt other people. They're the people who make malicious jokes because they need someone to feel better than they hate themselves. They have things they don't like about. Do you see this? Test this theory out. It's not a theory. Look at the people who are putting people down. Look at the people who always have to, you know, literally like jab at your happiness. That's because they're evil. Like they're they, they're miserable inside. You have never met anyone who is secure in themselves and loves themselves that does that. You know what they do? They uplift people. So really be mindful of who it is you're dealing with. Maybe people might be going through something. And when you see that that's the case, rub it in their face just by being you. Not by arguing with them. Not by bragging. Just by being happy. The best way you can rub this in their face is by genuinely being happy. They cannot stand not being able to manipulate and control things because they're weak. So if you show them that, oh, I don't have to stoop to you, you're adorable. You will see this. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So the path is good moving forward. And you're going to apply this perspective, define this legacy, which means the moon in Sag is showing you the higher perspective of who you are. What is happening? You're ascending who you are. You are harvesting the breakthrough of this full moon, which is showing you the effects of of the power you unlocked. It's time to see it. And once you see it, the moon's gonna go into Capricorn. You're gonna use it. You're gonna finish this cycle, clear the field, and we're gonna plant new seeds with the new moon in Aries. Once again, insecure people need someone to feel better than, and the weaker someone is, the more they, they hang out in groups. Mars and Aries, Aries gay. I could pull up anywhere solo dolo. <laughs> I don't need a fucking crew. I don't need to hide behind a gang. What's up? pull up the address you can look my address up and nobody's hiding so like just be very mindful of the way people talk because people who are weak that's all they can do trust me and this is the moon and sag is going to show you the application of these concepts like never before no one who is powerful strong and secure in themselves engages 
in stupid little bitch activities and weak little bitch activities. This has been studied in Yale. This has been studied in Harvard. Uh, weak little bitches have certain behaviors that are just not in the strong. Go look it up. Go look it up on their website. It's called um, SLB study and the WLB debate. All right, they've been debating this for like over 15 years. And other than that, you feel me? Just don't be a weak little bitch. Don't. Um, they're out here going out sad. They're exposing themselves. They've always lived a lie. And the reason why I'm very militant in the sign of the warrior Aries <laughs> is because you're activating this definition of who you are and you don't want to get caught up in pettiness from <sighs> insecure beings who wish they were you. Trust me, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. But you know, you know, anyway, um, there's different qualities to this square. We have the moon Sag to all this Pisces stellium. So if we had a Gemini stellium and the moon was in Sag. All right, cool. We would be coming into a really powerful idea about who we can be and we'll be seeing the higher meaning of what we are. If this was a Virgo stellium square Sagittarius, we would be more focused on how we are. We would be more focused on how our behavior really integrates our personality and we'll be seeing how it is socially we can integrate this if this was fully Sagittarian concentrated, it'd be purely philosophical. We'd be seeing how we're breaking through our character and being able to look beyond where we are currently. But this is a Pisces square. This is a full disillusionment of unconscious habits and beliefs that uplift you out of who you thought you used to be and giving you a final perspective. Unlike Gemini that's opening the door out of there, Pisces is closing out the shop. Like we're getting ready to this week, come into this higher perspective through Sagittarius of disillusioning us out of old beliefs. Do you know why you're being disillusioned? Well, the full moon in Libra, you harvested superpowers. This moon in Sagittarius, you're seeing the effect of who you are with these superpowers. So now that you're seeing these higher facets of your abilities, Sagittarius, Moon, Aries, Sun is the God level individual. It's the ascended individual. So everyone across the world is coming into a higher perspective based on the actions they harvested of, oh, this is who I can be. This is who I am. This is, this is a bird's eye view of who I am based on my actions. And now seeing this is going to change your beliefs about yourself. Because if you harvested and unlocked superpowers and now you're able to punch five men and they all move back, this is going to disillusion you from the belief that maybe you're not that powerful. Where now you just showed yourself you are. So th this is dynamic. That's why the square, the moon, the moon square to Saturn, Mars, Venus, Neptune is quite literally transcending your vision of yourself. It's a very magical transit. The entire transit, moon cap, moon aqua, moon Pisces, once we get to the moon Pisces, it's the final balsamic phase of now, well, I've done stuff I didn't think I can do. Now I'm having to release those beliefs. Then we step into this new cycle. So fully expect this happening. This is a game changer of how you see and believe in yourself. And given that this is the final effect from the full moon harvested from the new moon in Pisces that helped you trust in the magic of new beginnings, you're applying your beliefs of self into how you direct your character. And it, it, honestly, the rest of this airy season is it's, it's time to activate your motherfucking powers. OK, like this basically it. you're going to see what they are. You're going to understand utilization of it. Moon and Capricorn, you're going to know the knowledge of it and how it ties you into who else belongs around you. Mainly over the next week, you are not only coming into the effect of what your powers are. You're getting ready to see who is in your team. What Avenger squad are you with? This is lit. And then we're going to activate the cycle with the new moon. So if you're into that sci-fi fantasy stuff, this ain't sci-fi. It's not fantasy. You are a supernatural being. And you're going to learn more about your aura in a few short hours than you have your whole life. If you don't like what you see, change your character. That's it. That's it. There's no complaining. There's no projecting on it. Don't project on other people like these stupid little bitches. Change your character. Hold yourself accountable. That's it. The square to Pisces is going to challenge your beliefs because you're going to show yourself that you are exhibiting behavior and who you are is beyond who you currently believed or previously believed you are. So I hope you love what you see. And until next time.